Hey everyone, it's Matt. Today we're going to look at comparing two different sample populations. Uh, so for example, you may have two different uh, algorithms. They may do the same task. Uh, maybe you have a lot of data of them performing and you want to know which one is faster. Uh, perhaps in this case you'll compare their mean time. So you have the mean time of algorithm one, mean time of algorithm two from your sample, and maybe they're different. You want to know if that difference turns out to be significant. So this is in contrast to what we've done before. So previously we were taking one sample and we were comparing the maybe mean of that sample uh, to some other value that we're interested in. In this case, we have two samples and we want to compare the two sample statistics to see if we can claim some difference in the populations that they came from. So in this video, what we'll do is we'll go through proportion and then in class we'll see uh, mean as well. So what we'll do now is comparison of two independent and large population proportions. Uh, so you can imagine uh, having maybe two populations. We can say perhaps population one and population two. Uh, let's go ahead and assume these populations are independent. Uh, that's reasonable. If they're dependent, we'll have to do something else. And uh, just to make sure we have everything written down, let's uh, record some notation about how we'll talk about these things. Uh, so we're going to think about proportion today. So you may have pi 1, that's the population proportion for population 1. Uh, and similarly, we'll have another population proportion. We'll have pi 2 for population 2. We use n1 for sample size of the sample coming from population 1. We'll use n2 for the size of our sample that was drawn from population 2. Since we have proportion of a sample, uh, we will have x1 and x2. These are the number with a particular characteristic that we're interested in. This is for their respective samples, so this one is sample 1. Number is sample 1 with the characteristic we're interested in. The characteristic. Uh, we have this analogous x2, and we have the ratio p1 and p2, the sample proportion. So this is just x1 over n1, sample proportion for pa, uh, sample 1, and p2 is x2 over n2, the sample proportion for our sample coming from population 2. Whew. Okay, uh, as is the case, uh, we have some assumptions. These are similar to what we've had before, so we're assuming that these two samples are independent. Uh, moreover, we're going to assume that each of the samples are big enough. So this is the analogous criteria that we had for one sample. What this means is there must be at least five uh, with and without each characteristic in each sample. So let's write that down. So there must be at least five with the characteristic. And at least five without it. And this is in each sample. each sample. Okay, so this is similar to before. In this case, now, we will need a slightly different test statistic uh, to try and compare the statistics we have for both of our samples. You may notice in this case that they are both Z's, so these are both Z scores. So these formulas are similar 
to the z-scores that we had in the case of one sample, uh, but they are not the same. They take into account all of the information we have, and they are z-scores, so they are going to be uh, making use of the standard normal distribution. Okay, we'll use a standard normal distribution. Uh, there are two different Zs here that we've displayed. They are used in different cases. Uh, so in the first case, when we're working with two proportions and our null hypothesis is of this form, so this is when we are trying to test if the pi 1 and pi 2 are different. So we're asking if pi 1 minus pi 2 is 0. Uh, this is the test for equal proportions. Uh, this slightly different Z statistic in the bottom, the second one, is coming under different conditions. So you might ask if the proportions differ by some uh, percent K here. The proportions differ by K percent. So that is a slightly different question you could ask. Depending on the question you're asking, you'll have these two Z statistics here. Uh, we would also notice that in the case of equal proportions, the first one here, uh, we have this new quantity p bar that we need to compute that shows up in our z statistic. This is the proportion in the population pooled. So this is considering uh, perhaps as though both are the same. Uh, both samples come from the same population, and we lump all of the x1s together. We lump all of the total n1 and n2s together and find the proportion uh, p bar in that case. So we'll need this to conduct our hypothesis tests. And you may also, down here, wish to find the corresponding confidence interval uh, so this confidence interval formula we've displayed here, uh, this is for the difference in population proportions. So you can see the pi 1 minus pi 2 here is sandwiched between these uncomfortably large terms here, which we can compute. And this will give us a range for where we think the difference of the two proportions live. OK, let's turn our attention now to example 1. So let's go ahead and do a hypothesis test uh, for two population proportions. Uh, so in this example, we're comparing two uh, video games. Uh, we're comparing Guitar Hero 3 uh, with Guitar Hero 2, different iterations of these games. And uh, we have some question about uh, which one is easier. It seems here that a magazine has claimed that Guitar 3, Guitar Hero 3, is easier than Guitar Hero 2. Uh, maybe we are somewhat academic and we can test this claim. Uh, maybe we randomly select game players who've never played it before, assign them randomly either to play Guitar Hero 3 or Guitar Hero 2, and then ensure that they each spend one hour per day of a month playing the game to make sure they're all getting the same amount of time with it. After this month, we see we ask them whether or not they completed the game uh, on medium difficulty, and record the results below. So let's consider, uh, this is going to be confusing no matter what, let's consider Guitar Hero 2 to be population 2, so the 2's line up, and we'll consider Guitar Hero 3 to be population 1. As you can see, uh, the number who completed the game for Guitar Hero 3 is 63, whereas Guitar Hero 2 is 43. Maybe Guitar Hero 3 is easier, Maybe not. Uh, 
Let's also notice that the samples are slightly different sizes, so really we should be comparing the proportion, P1, and proportion P2. So P1 is 63 over 78, P2 is 43 over 77. These appear to be different. Are they different enough that we can confirm this claim at a particular level alpha? So let's do a hypothesis test on this data uh, with an alpha of 0 0.01. All right, let's get started. So let's go through each of our steps in the process. Let's start with step one. So here we have a claim. We are claiming that Guitar Hero 3, let's abbreviate in this way, is easier to complete. Uh, of course, then Guitar Hero 2. Uh, in terms of mathematical symbols, we could maybe write that as pi 1, the proportion who complete Guitar Hero 3, is higher than that of 2. In order to make this play nice with our hypothesis test, we'll rearrange it to consider the difference and ask if that is positive. So we'll ask if pi 1 minus pi 2 is greater than 0. So that's step 1. Let's continue to step 2. Let's write out our null and alternative hypothesis here. So our null hypothesis will always include equality. So we're testing whether pi 1 minus pi 2 is 0, or maybe it's not. Uh, in particular, in this case, we will use a one-sided test. We're asking if pi 1 minus 2, pi 2 is positive, and this happens to be the claim. Claim is HA, alternative, we can come back to that at the end. All right, step three is the easy step. Alpha has been supplied to us. We will take alpha equals 0 0.01. Good. Let's get to checking our assumptions to make sure that we are allowed to do the test. Let's check. I don't think we're overly suspicious about the sample. Let's assume they're independent. It seems they were randomly given either Guitar Hero 3 or Guitar Hero 2. In terms of our size, N1 times P1 is 63. N2 times P2 is 43, the number of people who completed the game. And those who didn't, n1 times 1 minus p1 uh, is 15, so it's big enough. It's bigger than 5. And the non-completers for Guitar Hero 2 was even bigger, 34. So all of our assumptions here are satisfied. So let's continue now and get ready to compute the test statistic. Okay, we will need the p-bar that we saw earlier, considering both population, uh, both samples together. So 43 plus 63 over 77 plus 78, or 106 over 155. So we'll use that. To compute our test statistic here, let's find our z. We'll use the formula, the first one we saw before. We're testing whether these two are equal or not. We 
with a square root. Okay, uh, it's a little bit daunting, but we have everything we need in here. So let's slot them in. 77. We're testing if the difference is zero, so the pi one minus uh, the pi one minus pi two drops out, and we have a square root in the bottom using our p bar that we found earlier. All right, one can compute this, and you end up with a z of about three point three three six nine. Now that we have our test statistic, we can compute to see whether we can reject or not. Uh, let's just do this the classical way. Let's find our rejection region. Let's recall that our alternative hypothesis uh, is not does not equal, it's an inequality. Uh, in particular, it's uh, greater than, so we're using a right-tailed test. Right-tailed. Uh, we can envision some normal curve here with some area in the tail that uh, takes 1% of the area. We can find the corresponding z value using our q-norm function. of 0.99. When we compute that, we end up with about 2.33, so quite a bit smaller than our computed z. With that in hand, we can make our decision in step 7. Our z was 3.34. This is in the rejection re region. Uh, so let's reject. Let's reject our H0 here. So we're going to reject H0, uh, and our original claim was HA. Let's come up to the top and record our conclusion in step 8. So we've rejected H0, the claim was HA. You can look on the table to find the appropriate wording here in step 8. We can say in this case the sample, sample data uh, supports the claim sample data support the claim that Guitar Hero 3 is easier to complete than Guitar Hero 2. All right, so let's do one similar example now doing confidence intervals. So we'll use the same problem we were doing before. Uh, let's construct a 99% confidence interval for the difference in proportions from example one. So the 99% corresponds to our previous alpha. So we've done a lot already. So we would have to check all these assumptions. We've already done that in example one. In order to construct our confidence interval, we're going to need our z alpha over 2. Uh, that will correspond to z of 0 0.005. Based on our 99% confidence interval, we can compute this using our q norm function with 0 0.995 to get a value of 2.575. Now, let's use our formula to construct the interval. It's a bit daunting, but we have everything we need, so these can just be plugged in. So the difference of proportion 1 with proportion 2, we've seen that already.
let's subtract off our z alpha over 2 uh, times everything in this square root. So let's have p1 uh, times its flip, 1 minus p1, all over n1 itself. And then the same for p2. All of that goes inside the square root. So that will be the lower bound for our interval, bounding pi 1 minus pi 2. Above, we use the same. So we'll use our difference in proportions that the study gave us. And then instead of subtracting, we will add 2.575. And we'll multiply by all the same stuff in the square root. So we only need to compute that square root once. I'll just put some dot dot dots here. Once you crunch this out, you can get the following bounds for pi 1 minus pi 2. So on the one side, we get 0 0.0637. And on the other, we get 0 0.4349. So it's a pretty big range, but we're very confident in it. We're 99% confident, in fact. So let's record the outcome here with 99% confidence. The completion rate that we are comparing so the completion rate of Guitar Hero 3 Uh, this one is larger, uh, pi 1 minus pi 2 is definitely bigger than 0. It's between 6.37% larger uh, and about 43% larger. Uh, when compared to Guitar Hero. So is Guitar Hero 3 easier to complete uh, with 99% confidence? Yes, somewhere between 6.37% and 43.49% uh, easier somehow. We can make one more remark. Uh, the example proper is done, but I would just like to note Uh, that since 0% is not in the range here, the range for pi 1 minus pi 2 contains only positive percents. So since 0% is not in this range, this will correspond to a rejection of the null hypothesis in the previous example. So it's interesting to note that the two go together. They are, in fact, the same thing. So previously, we rejected the null. That is to say that in our confidence interval, for which we are 99% confident, the chance of pi 1 minus pi 2 being 0 uh, does not exist. It does not fall in the range that we have constructed. All right, so that's it for this example. We'll do a few more examples in class, in particular uh, we can look at means. Head on over to D2L and take a look at the quiz.